Today, I'm with Eric Bensusson, and I'm excited to talk with him about um, his new training academy for coaches and uh, specifically what kinds of things that he's been training coaches to do. So, uh, Eric, great to have you here. Uh, great to be with you. <laughs> Thank yeah, you for having me. Totally. So uh, I'll just kind of share your, uh, your quick bio, and then we'll get into the conversation. So uh, Eric is a certified transformational relationship coach, and his first passion is to understand relationships and the mind from a psychological, emotional, spiritual, and scientific point of view. Uh, he supports individuals and couples who are experiencing emotional challenges. And his, his a, a additional passion is in coaching. And he's trained thousands of coaches uh, you know, for different companies. And he's just launched his own training, which is the Coaching with Passion Academy. So, um, you know, we can, we can, uh, we can talk, there's so much we can talk about, but given that you're just launching your um, Coaching with Passion Academy, I'm really curious, what, like, what's one of the concepts that you find that the students are, are, are really benefiting from? Like, what's, what's, just give us a taste of kind of what's, yeah, what's that's in a, there. That's a great yeah. question. You know, you know, George, you know me a little bit. So I'm, I'm really passionate about coaching. I'm really passionate about making a transformation in people, right? And I think a, a lot of people, uh, especially those days, right, with the period that we are in this uncertain time, <clears throat> they want to also make a, a contribution. They want to transform people's lives. But, you know, if I remember myself 12 years ago when I started in this coaching business, there was this little voice telling me, hey, who do you think you are, Eric, to do that, right? But I'm so glad that I didn't hear that voice. I'm so glad that I still went to that uh, coaching industries, right? So the thing that I'm, that I'm helping people with the most is to awaken that passion, really awaken that passion for helping others and making a difference. Now, of course, we, we all know and you know that this is not enough, right? We can have a passion, we want to help people, but there is the, the, the downside and what I see about a lot of coaches in the world is they get their certification and after the certification, they are left high and dry. They don't know what to do, they don't know how to market themselves, you know, you know very well the thing. So in my coaching training, I really combine the skills of uh, Help, uh, teaching people how to transform people's life and how to be uh, effective in a coaching conversation. But that being said, I also bring the practice and I also bring the authentic marketing that I mostly learned from you, George. <laughs> yeah. So it's been it's, it's an ongoing program with a support because what I what I notice is most of the program there there are wonderful programs out there, right? Wonderful. But the thing is, after the certification, they leave the students completely by themselves. They have no support. And those people, they just, they, they never learn how to do marketing. I never learned how to do marketing. I mean, I'm good with sales. I'm good with people. But I had to, to, to come across all the, the authentic strategies that don't feel, you know, that you stay in your truth, that you can still market yourself, but still be able not to manipulate people to buy your services. So one, the, yeah. one of the great things that I love about what I'm doing right now is I combine the skills of a coach and a trainer. So I've been in their shoes before, right? So I know what it is to wait for the client to come. I know what it is. So it's a very strong foundation about having a coaching conversation. And I use a, a lot of NLP in that. And, you know, it's years of experimenting about training uh, many people around the world. Plus, I add... The, the, the practice side. So every week we practice all together and I mentor them. And then I'm going to teach them and I'm going to have monthly uh, complimentary workshop and a weekly live with me to teach them how to be effective at marketing themselves and getting some clients. So yeah, let's, let's talk about this. So um, the, maybe you could share what yeah, because there are some new coaches or some aspiring coaches who are watching this. So give us a, give us a taste of what that framework is for how a coach gets clients. Uh, yes, you know, there's, there's always one thing that I tell people, if you want people to hire you, they will hire you mostly for two things. One is they need to trust you. 
So you need to build a relationship with those people and you need to build trust, right? That's why when we have a referral, for example, the trust is already there. Someone else has said, hey, you can trust this guy or you can trust this coach or you can trust this woman, go for it. So then we don't have to build the relationship, right? The second part where people will hire you is if you know that you're an expert in your field and that you can help them solve a problem that they cannot solve on their own. I think for me, that's the combination and that's what I notice in my own uh, private practice, right? If people trust me and if they can see that I can help them and solve a specific problem or many problems that they can't on their own, they, they will hire me. I mean, 90% of the time, that's what it is. So, so everything is about that, is about first building relationship and when people don't know you, how do they get a sense of who you are? How do they get a sense of what is your voice? What is your point of view, right? So it's slowly, slowly building. So I think one of the things is what coaches think that after the certification, they're going to have clients like falling from the trees. No, it's never going to happen. You have to do something about it. And I learned that the hard way, right? And um, so you need to get in front of your audience or maybe your potential audience, or, or, and then you need to tell them, hey, here's what I'm doing. Here's what I'm about. Here's my point of view. Here's my voice. Here's what you can get. So it's, it, for me, it's really about coaching people, really. Give them a test. Give them 100% value, massive value. And at some point, they will hire you. And it doesn't matter if they hire you now or if they hire you in five years. But at least you're building and, and whatever uh, seeds you plant to those people, you never know. You never know with one video, with one article, with one quote, how you can make a transformation or how you can make a, a inspired someone. And then they start to follow you and they start, you know, and, 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 and you know about that, having a ra raving fans, people will love who you are. And some people will love you and some people will hate you. Doesn't matter, right? Yeah, but that's actually, what it is. It's, that's true. I mean, uh, you know, if, in fact, if you are uh, doing a good job of being authentic, you exactly. will be turning, you're supposed to be turning some people off because it's not the right match. But exactly. some people, if you're authentic, oh my gosh, it's the, just the right, just the right match. So, so, okay. And you, so you talked about kind of building trust, being in front of your audience, sharing your voice, yeah. sharing your point of view. And then you also talked about how you need to make sure people feel like you could solve a problem of theirs. How do, how do you help people to see that? Like, how do you, yeah. You know, there is one thing that I notice is a lot, uh, for many years, a lot of people know what I do. They know that I'm a relationship co mm -hmm. uh, coach, right. Right, right? right? But they have no idea specifically about what I do. They have no idea who, who do I coach and what do I help people with? They have no idea about that. And very naively, I saw that they knew, right? So when you get content, authentic content about what, how you help people out there, then people start to say, oh, I didn't know, Eric, that you were doing that. Oh, you, you solving a problem about confidence. Oh, I can use your help with that. Oh, you, you help people with breakup. Oh, you, so, you know, it, it, so it's about experimenting and putting out there how you can help people. So you create your content in a way that shows people what you can do for them. And, and I think a lot of coaches for, 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 forget that piece of work that we have to do. And, and slowly, slowly, sometimes people follow me, they are friends or, you know, people that I know and they follow me for so long and then suddenly I will post something and then suddenly they will reach out and send a message and say, well, I didn't know you were doing that. So I remember one thing that I learned from you, George, is about experimenting, but also putting out there some content, but also some offer. I remember when I started, I didn't have any offer. I thought that I could be just a good coach and that I would coach anyone, right? But by bringing offer to offer to offer to offer, so then people get a sense, oh, he's talking about boundaries. Oh, he's talking about communication. Oh, he's talking about divorce. Oh, he's talking about that. Oh, he's talking about parenting, right? Some people don't know that I'm talking about parenting. Sometimes I talk about mindset. So it's really about giving a taste slowly, slowly to people so that they can they get, get used to your content and to what you're about. 
And then at some point there will be a click and say, wow, okay, maybe this guy or maybe this, this coach can help me with something. How about I reach out? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and this is great. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, backing up, you know, you, you, well, so who is the ideal student for the academy? Is, is it somebody who um, is thinking, obviously somebody who's thinking about coaching would like to become a coach. Um, what if somebody is already trained? Can they still take the academy? What's yeah. your thought? Yeah, yeah that, that's a great question. Thank you yeah. for asking that question. Actually, I have very different uh, kind of students. I have the students who don't know anything about coaching, but they love helping people. Yeah. And they say, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm, I, maybe this is for me. I want to try. I want to make a difference in the world. How can I help people? That's, so that's the first one. But in, in this category, a lot of them, it took it take them years or months to get to the point to allow themselves to say out loud, yes, this is what I want to do. And if I remember myself when I when I started thinking about becoming a coach 12 years ago, it took me probably, I, I'm fast, right? I'm a risk taker, but it probably took me six, three to six months to really allow myself to say, yes, you can do that, right? So there are a lot of people, they're thinking about it, but they stuck, they, think, they make a lot of excuses, right? I need a job, I need to pay my bills, I need that, I need that. So they don't focus on that. So that's the first pool of students. The other pool of students is people who have been coach, coaches for a while, but they haven't been successful. And when I say successful, you know, it's, it's relative. What is success for one? What is success? But they don't have like consistent clients. So they feel completely hopeless. And at some point they gave up on that. Or they have one client here, one client there. So they give up. So the training is a refresher about all the, the strategies about how to be in a conversation. But then we'll teach them something very consistent and a structure so that they can help built or rebuilt their coaching practice. And I also have a lot of counselors and psychologists, actually. I was very surprised to see that because those, those people, they want to add coaching as another modality. They want to combine the coaching modality. First, because a lot of people, when you are a counselor, when you are a psychologist, you need a licensed state, you need a specialized training, you know, it, it becomes very complicated those days <laughs> to do something. So coaching is a way you don't you don't need a, a license to be a coach. You can everyone say can be a coach, but those people they want to have the integrity of delivering uh, values to the, to those people, but not all the the hassle of the license and everything. And one thing that I tell you that I experienced myself from the age of probably twenty years old that I'm fifty two, right? I've tried everything. I'm a seeker, right? So I've tried every modalities. I've been in counseling. I've been in therapy. I've been in treatment. Though all those modalities gave me a great sense of who I am and what I can do in the world, nothing helped me like coaching. And I think those people come to realize that there are many, many, there are millions of people out there who wants to change their life, but they don't want to go in the past. They don't want to dig about they don't want to spend six years in therapy to try to solve their problem. They want tools and they want effective um, strategies to live their life right now and to improve their life right now. And I think also because there is a booming right now with what's happening with the COVID and all the situation in the world, people started to realize, hey, I need to change my life. And maybe it's not because I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. So there are the point in their life that they, they want to do something now and they want to do, but they just don't know how to do. So they need a little bit of guidance and a little bit of help so that they can focus their attention and intention on what's so meaningful for them. Yeah, this is really, it's, it's really good to, to define coaching, actually. A lot of people have heard that term coach, obviously. Everyone, yeah. <laughs> I use the term coach. I don't think I'm really a coach, but, um, you know, authentic business mentor. Some people say, George, no, you're not a coach. You're a mentor. You, you like give people this... this I'm like, okay, but authentic business matter, ABM is not as uh, nice sounding as ABC, authentic business coach. <laughs> so, so I kind of yeah. have kept, I, I, you know, a long time ago, I started working with coaches. So I call myself a coach because I didn't really know what that means. So you're defining it now and I really like it. So 
we've all heard of therapy, psychotherapy, um, counseling. So say, tell us again, what is the main difference between coaching and other modalities? Of course, there's many other modalities, but let's just say yeah. psychotherapy. What's the difference? Well, well, coaching, you don't dig into the past, right? You don't have to. I mean, if you, if you, have, if you are skilled with doing that, mm -hmm. for example, I do some inner child work in my uh, coaching uh, relationship, coaching practice, because, but I learn. I'm skilled with that, right? But coaching is really about empowering people to start doing what they, uh, what they have made excuses not to do. So it's really about taking what is your, your present situation, I don't really need to know how you came to that situation. But what I want to know is now that you are stuck or you are challenged or you have something that is dissatisfying in your life, what could be meaningful and important to you right now? So we refocus people on recreating a vision aligned with their values. And once we're there, okay, what, what are the solution and what are the next steps that you're going to do and what are you going to be in order to, to move towards your um, your goals, your desires, your dreams. So that's what, what's, what's it about. So we don't give any advices. We help people uncover the resources that they already have within ourselves. And we all have resources that, you know, when we don't know that we don't know, right? So we only function like 5% consciously. So there is a full potential within ourselves, which we don't know that, that it's there. And we have to transcend our reality. We have to transcend our challenges to suddenly feel, oh my God, I may be courageous enough to take a leap of faith. I may be courageous to do that. Finally, oh, I have this leadership within myself. I never knew that I had that because people have so many limitations. So it's about getting out of the way what is holding them back and lim limiting them and say, okay, what do I do now? So it's taking massive action massive uh, experimenting until they find what really what works really well but it, i think uh, one way to uh, to describe very quickly coaching is an for me it's an alignment process who you are <laughs> what is your vision what do you want to be why is that important for you and then what do you need to to have what do you need to be and what do you need to do in order to get what you want so it's really an, an alignment process and when you're aligned we have all have experienced sometimes in our life, we want something and it comes easily. Why? It's because we are totally aligned. The timing is aligned. Our vision is aligned. Our identity, how we show up in the world is aligned with what we want. And most of the time, let's say that we are misaligned. But people take things personally. So they start to feel, oh my God, I'm not good enough. I am not blah, 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 you know, all those core beliefs that we can have. I don't belong. I am not appreciated. I'm a, I'm a failure. All those things, right? And when you get out of the way of the, all those limitations, then people start to feel relief and then start to see a realm of possibilities. And, that, and for me, that's what coaching is about, is inviting people to create possibilities and open up self-reflection in a way that they haven't been able to do before. I really like that. Self-reflection in a way they haven't done just by themselves. Otherwise, if they had reflected enough and understood their vision and their values and the, the next steps that align with them, they, they would have done it already, right? And no, so- No, exactly. And, and, and so I, I really like this. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, you, obviously you have a passion for, for, for coaching. I mean, this is why you're very qualified to be training people and coaching people on, on how to do this. So, so, in the, I, so this is a, an important distinction that I want to just reiterate. A coach is not somebody who has all the answers, who says, oh, I know exactly, um, you know, the right, uh, I have been, I've, I'm a PhD in relationships and I, I know exactly all the theories. And <laughs> no, a coach is somebody who helps, who is skilled at helping the client uncover the answers that they already know, right? And, um, or the resources, like you said, the inner resources, yeah. the inner strength. And I think it's so powerful because when we are able to unlock the answers and the strength within ourselves, it is much more of a sustainable process of change instead of relying on somebody to say, well, you give me everything because I don't know anything. You give me everything. Um, but yeah, say, say more about that. Like, like that's, I, that's the promise of coaching, isn't it? 
I, yeah, no, that's exactly it. What it is, is most of the time people in their life, because we, we are in a, in a society where we thrive to do things, we're in the rut, we don't have time. We feel we have no control and we have, we probably have no control about everything, we, but, it, but that's okay to have no control, right? And most of the time when we get stuck in a situation, we feel powerless. And if you feel powerless, you attract more things that makes you, you think that you're powerless. So the thing is helping people to whatever situation they are in to stay in their personal power. So staying in my personal power is about instead of reacting to a situation, instead of make it mean something about myself, I just become an observer about what's going on into my life. I don't make it mean anything. And I know that I have those core beliefs, so I just have to shut them down for a while and say, okay, who would I be without all those limitations? And what can I do now to improve my life? So it's really about staying in your power. So one of the things that I love doing with, with my students is I love them to be aligned, not only aligned, but to be in a peak state of mind. Because in order to change your life, you need to change your physiology, right? That's what it is. So when you completely align and you're in your peak state of mind with alignment with what you want, everything is easy and effortless. That's what it is. Yeah. And, and, and you know that, George, you know, when you decided to move from your old career to say, hey, I'm going to do like something more authentic. Everything was aligned for you in that moment. And then you built a wonderful a practice because everything was aligned. Yeah. So, of course, it took you a lot of work to get clients to, 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 to get to know you. But it, it would have probably come, whether it's one year, two years or three years, because you completely align, you're authentic, you know what you're about, you know what's important for you. You know who you are. You know who you're becoming through this process. So then people come to you. Yeah. And so that's, one, that's one of the things that is also really important is there's another piece that I teach in my training. So there is the, the marketing, there is the strategy, there is everything. But there is also something that I learned uh, from the surrender experiment from, from Michael Singer, right? Is being able to live your life from a place of possibility and whatever comes your way, Let's see it as a blessing. Even if sometimes it's not a blessing, right? You don't see it that way. But what if you can say, okay, let's deal with that. Or, okay, I have an opportunity. Let's take that opportunity and let's see where it leads me. So instead of trying to control everything and the human mind wants to control everything, it's saying, hey, I'm totally going to surrender and whatever comes to mind, uh, comes, comes to me, I will welcome that and see where it leads me. And I have to tell you something, George. A few years ago, I wanted to give up coaching. I remember I was in France visiting my parents. And I said, you know, I was not consistent at getting clients. And I, and I, and I remember the moment where I, tell, I told myself, you know what, Eric, maybe this is not for you. Maybe there is something else for you. And that's okay. You really have to let it go. And that was just a thought that I had. Believe me or not, the next week after that, that, that I have no, that don't want to control anything, the, suddenly the emails came and the phone came. This year, it was probably my best year as a coach. I had so many clients coming to me. So once I suddenly say, hey, I'm not going to control anything, but I'm going to let the universe or, or whatever, the higher power or your creative side to help me co-create what i what i'm about then i was aligned again and then uh, my business took off i so love what you're saying i i really do i feel like you should share this message more like everywhere you go um first of all i love that book the surrender experiment by michael singer yeah. it's also one of my favorites but i also have experienced what you're talking about um it, it's it's the it's it's such an interesting paradox of reality is that when we let go of the attachment to the result and we simply you know align with our authentic service yeah. something weird happens something strange happens it's it's you can't you can't necessarily plan exactly how that happens but it happens it's like some 
weird vibrational change. <laughs> so I'm really grateful uh, that your students and your clients get to experience your energy and your training you. uh, to help them to kind of make that shift themselves. So let's kind of um, end by, by talking about, well, uh, actually quick question I wanna ask you. When your students graduate um, from the Coaching with Passion Academy, uh, their title, is it life, life coach? What, what is the title that- yeah, that... It's a life coach certification, but we Great. all know that life coach means nothing for, for everyone, <laughs> right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> if, yeah. you, if you tell people I'm a life coach, they may look at you and say, I have no idea what is a life coach. <laughs> so those life coach will become an expert in their field. They will choose to be either a relationship coach, right. a business okay. coach, That's a really career good. coach, right? Yeah, that makes they sense. Got, they, they got, and I'm going to help them find what would be the best for them, right? right. right. So for me, when I started my, my, my coaching practice, I always knew that I wanted to be a relationship coach. But when I started, when I was, I was still in France, because I was in the business and the corporate world, in order to, to, to start not from scratch, I, start, I, I, I was a business coach and I was a sales coach. So I started my career like that to take off, to get some practice, to get confident with myself. And then it was easier for me to, then to start from scratch. And then when I felt, okay, I'm done with working with, uh, with business coaching and everything, because this is not what, where my passion really lies. I really want to do uh, relationship coaching. Then I made the shift. So some people, if you, re, if you work all your whole life in career change or maybe in HR, maybe you have an expertise in that. So maybe you want to use that expertise to start to build your career around that and see how it goes. That doesn't it's, mean that along the way, you're not going to change your niche yeah. or you're not going to change who you are as a coach. And I know so many coaches have changed. Totally. Uh, I, yeah. This is a really important message. Um, it, you know, the, the niche and identity thing can evolve and will evolve <laughs> because if we evolve yes. uh, but i also like that you're saying that coaching can be added on top of your life experience your career yes. experience what experience yes. that that makes you unique to another person on the street you know you have so much of that and so exactly. anyway i want to i want to make sure people know so what is the next step someone is watching this hearing this and say i'd like to work with eric um i want him to train me uh uh, for in, in terms of coaching, but also in terms of being able to succeed in my coaching business, what's the next step? Yeah, well, go visit my website, which is coaching uh, www.coachingwithpassionacademy.com mm -hmm. or send me an email, which is info at coachingwithpassionacademy.com. And then we will be in touch and we will talk what is the right st the next step. So I don't know when, when this uh, uh, video will, will be live, right? But yeah. I, I have to, uh, tomorrow I start a new training, but I start training every two months. Okay. Okay. So, so right? whenever you're watching this, um, there will be an upcoming training. Uh, yeah. And, you know, and so just, just reach out, reach out to Eric and um, make sure you, you know, find out the details. Yeah. And, and actually I'm thinking about doing some, experimenting something a little bit different, which could help some people. Let's say you don't want to re be retrained as a coach, right? You can take the training at mid of the training as a membership and do the, the business part. Okay. And the go. practice part with other students, because I think it's also very important to connect with having a network with other coaches, because this is a, a work that we do that we are all day by ourselves. So I think it's important to build the network. Nice. So I'm putting also that into place. And probably by the, by the time this video will be live, I will have this membership so people can jump in just for the, the, the three months part about the authentic. Um, yeah. Building a business. Marketing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, totally. Great. Eric, always a pleasure to connect with you. you. It's always great to, to be in your presence and your energy and your Thank passion. You. Um, it is just, just by who you are. You, um, I think you make the people around you better. So Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for, for who you Thank are. Thank you very much. Thank you. And um, yeah, I, so folks go and take a look at Eric's website. Of course, all the links are below and um, you know, any questions you can always comment below. I'll make sure Eric sees it. And thanks again, Eric, for your great work. Thank you. Thank you, George.